what are the the ideas, the stories, the actions, the practices that um, you find most helpful, inspiring, powerful in sustaining hope, the hope and courage you need to kind of get every, up every morning and continue to work on these yeah. issues? Um, what, what, what gets you uh, up in the morning? I think one of, one of the first things I'd say is to sort of recognise the limit of any single human being even presidents of the most powerful countries in the world just aren't going to be able to solve it on their own. So certainly, you know, I think people working on this issue should never feel like it's all on their shoulders. This is a group activity. Um, and I guess in some ways, uh, you know, sort of fantasies about rescuing the world are their own worst curse. Mm. And I do see a procession of very enthusiastic young people usually young or some you know, deluded old people who think they're going to solve the whole thing and mm. they usually burn out in a year or two mm. because mm. it's not that sort of issue and it's a great fantasy but it's got to be a group activity which is you know a blessing and a curse it means that work I find that I work with other like-minded people like-minded organizations so that you know I can contribute my little piece to the puzzle um, but recognise that there's some pretty um, important societal changes in business, in politics, um, in leadership that I don't have control of. Mm. So I, I recommend people to find the, the bit of the puzzle that they can contribute to. To monitor a little bit mm. your emotions in working in this area, mm. um, you know, a little bit like a, 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 I'm a medical background and so... Mm. You know, if you're working in palliative care or you're working at the children's hospital yeah. um, or you're working in a lot of mental health, it's a good idea to have a supervisor of sorts or someone who's helping you keep your emotions in check yeah. and knowing when you're a bit burnt out and you need to just back yeah. off a little bit but because if you want to work in this area for the long term, you need to have some strategy to manage that, uh, you know, fluctuating sense of hope and sometimes despair about what's going on. So some red flags for me that um, I watch out for that I'm, I'm probably getting too emotional uh, would be where I'm uh, heading down catastrophic type uh, climate change conversations in everyday social settings or with friends. You know, that means it's probably all going a bit too far. And with some of the young students, I say, you know, make sure that you've got an array of friendships, some obviously, you know, who might be very passionate about the environmental or climate issues, but keep keep a foot in the, in the lighthearted part of life as well and the sense mm. of humour um, so that you don't become a sort of, A, miserable and B, very unhelpful at solving yeah. the issue. Mm. I can put one, one other thing in there um, and is the big picture, the big perspective. Mm. And, and that runs on a couple of levels. I mean, there's the philosophical one, and I, I'm a bit of a geek and I'm quite into astronomy. And, you know, you're looking out right. there and it, there is something slightly humorous about here we are on this little ball and you know, this is a massive number <laughs> yep. of galaxies more than the uh. grains of sand. So, you know, it just puts right. things in perspective and uh. it's quite, quite funny. Yeah. But, but I also think historically, um, and, you know, you, you watch, I, I like, being a geek, I also like documentaries. And, you know, you look at the um, First World War, Second World War, and the chaos that the world was in, and the hopelessness, um, and you would think, you know, how is humanity going to get themselves out of this? So humanity does have an extraordinary capacity for um, finding a way through, you know, sometimes a bit later than earlier, but um, you know, I think you have to look at this challenge in a historical perspective. Yeah.